Welcome back. Continuing our review for test three. We're in unit 10 now. And this time I'm going to give you some sample test questions and kind of do the review that way. Let's get started. All right. How about this? Let me move it up a little bit. Uh oh. There we go. There we go. So, what do you think about this question? What kind of stress is indicated by the arrows? Notice the top arrow is pushing at the top part of the rock, the bottom arrow is pushing at the bottom part of the rock in a different direction. When we have forces, and that's what the arrows are supposed to represent. When we have forces that act on different parts of a region in different directions, that's called shear stress. So I hope you said shear stress for the answer there. Let's try another one. Which factor would make ductile deformation more likely to occur. Low temperature, rigid rock, gradual application of stress. Only one of those is correct. What do you think? Need help? Ductile deformation is the bending of rock. So if the rock is really cold, it's probably going to be brittle and not bend. If the rock is very rigid, it's less likely to bend. But if we apply the stress very gradually over long, long, long periods of time, we can even get a fairly rigid rock to bend and undergo ductile deformation. So I hope you said C for the answer. Okay, let's try this one. It says the angle of a rock layer with respect to horizontal is the, is it the dip direction, the dip angle, or the strike? You need to know this terminology with dip and strike. So what do you think? I hope you said dip angle. The dip angle is the angle that a rock is tilted with respect to horizontal. Let me see if I can find a related question. Probably even more important and useful is to understand how to read a strike and dip symbol on a geologic map. So here you have rock unit A. It's got a strike and dip symbol on it. And here's the north arrow. Uh, north is to the top of the page on this map, like most maps. Question says, the strike and dip symbol indicates that rock A is dipping to the north, south, east, or west. When we say, what is the dip direction? We're saying, what direction would a marble roll if we put a marble on the surface of the rock layer, in this case, rock layer A? I hope you said it would roll to the north because uh, that strike and dip symbol with this little kind of base of this T-shaped strike and dip symbol is saying that rock layer A is no longer horizontal. It has been tilted toward the north at an angle of 20 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Let's do this one here. We have a geologic map. What kind of fold is in the subsurface underneath this geologic map? Is it an anticline, a syncline, a plunging anticline, or a plunging syncline? Hint, use the strike and dip symbols. Those strike and dip symbols are showing that either side or limb of the fold is dipping toward the center. And what kind of Structure does that, something like this. This dips toward the center. That would be a syncline. Don't say plunging syncline because our outcrop patterns are parallel bands. How about another one? Similar question, what kind of fold lies in the subsurface underneath this geologic map? Same choices. Again, you have the strike and dip symbols. This time, our outcrop patterns wrap around the fold axis. 
So that would be a plunging anticline, plunging anticline C. I hope you chose that one. One more fold question over here. This time we have no strike and dip symbols. We have this sandstone rock formation, a shale rock formation, and limestone out here on our geologic map. And we are given the relative ages of those three rock units. The sandstone's the oldest. So is the map indicating that there's an anticline, syncline, plunging anticline, or plunging syncline in the subsurface? We know it's a plunging fold because of the wraparound outcrop pattern, making a V-shape. And that would be a plunging anticline. A plunging anticline, answer C, because our oldest rock unit is exposed along the fold axis and we have younger and younger rock formations out on the limbs. The arch-like anticline pushes the oldest rocks up and they'll be exposed by erosion in the center of the fold along the fold axis. How about uh, a fault question? Here's a map, just a regular old map, and it's showing two streams that are clearly offset. <laughs> so does the map indicate there's a normal fault here, a reverse fault, a right lateral strike slip fault, or a left lateral strike slip fault? I hope you said a left lateral strike slip fault. For this question, we have to realize our fault runs along there. The streams are offset because this part of the region is being pushed this way to the southeast. This part of the region up here is being pushed to the northwest. If we stand on one side of our fault and look across the fault, we see that the other side has shifted to our left, and that's what makes it a left lateral strike slip fault. Let's see if we have one more question. I have one right here. I think I need to zoom this out a bit. <laughs> it's a two-parter. Okay, we have two faults. We have two faults and we're showing a, a cross-section view, okay? This is the land surface. This is a mountain here. And the mountain is bounded by faults A and B. They're both the same kind of fault. What kind is it? Are they normal faults, reverse faults, left lateral strike slip faults, or right lateral strike slip faults? Well, you can see the rocks have been displaced in the direction of the dip of those faults. And you can see that the block of rock that's on top of the fault has shifted downward. The hanging wall went down. Hanging wall down is a normal fault. How about over here, same kind? Well, once again, we have the fault plane dipping in a different direction, but the block on top, the hanging wall, that shifted down relative to the foot wall. So hanging wall down is a normal fault. Certain kinds of mountains, we said, are bounded by normal faults. Those are the fault block mountains, right? So this mountain is a fault block mountain. Where would you expect those fault block mountains to form? Where normal faults would form? Normal faults form due to tension in the crust. We'd expect there to be a lot of tension in the crust along a divergent plate boundary. Okay, well, I hope you did well on these questions. If not, maybe check out those review videos on how to answer test questions about folds and faults.